Hello, Noah here, and welcome back to A Turnabout to El Dorado. So, last time we left off, uh, left off, um, I honestly can't really remember what we did. We did finish the court segment there, and, um, our piece of shit defendant was being stupid and making horrible decisions at every step of the way. He tried to bribe the prosecution, uh, so that didn't go too well for him, but we managed to... Uh, just get it out in the end, and I believe we got an extension on this case. Uh, and now we're back to the past, I believe, and uh, Emma here is asking if Miss Nova is okay. So let's just go ahead and start here. Miss Nova? You okay in there? I yeah, just a moment. Uh, okay. Be good and get up, won't would you? Come on. You can do this, Victoria. You got this. Are you okay, Miss Nova? You were in there for quite a while. Uh, sorry to worry you. Just a stomach bug of some kind, I'm afraid. But anyway, I don't want that to be all you get out of this. How did? How do you like this office of mine? I know it's a bit messy, but... It's incredible. The sheer amount of bugs and notebooks and... And it's a mess, but I can tell it's still organized. It is? Well, I'm glad you like it. I've actually prepared a few books for you to take with you back to Europe. Really? Oh, you didn't have to do that. Meh, I've read them all anyway. I imagine they'll be as good as in-flight entertainment as anything. I also intended to show you my pet turtle Jackson, but he's... Well, he's kinda in hiding. I'll let you know if I find him. So, what have you been up to lately? Oh, um... Well, I had my exams. And? I, um, rather not talk about it. Oh. I'm sorry. It's okay. I can retake them in a few months. That's good. This one was obviously just a fluke. You'll nail the other one, I'm sure. I do I appreciate the encouragement, but really, it's fine. Is that so? Uh, but, um... I really want to thank you for this past month. It's been an interesting experience. You've taught me so much. I did? Well, glad to hear it. There's something I wanted to give you, actually. As a thank you. It's my heart! You don't have to accept it, but... Here. Ooh. Hmm? What's this? A button of some kind? Or, no, a badge? Look at my badge. It looks kind of cute, actually. Thank you, Emma. I'll take good care of it. In fact, here. I'll put it on. Are you sure? Emma, you've been a good friend to me. And even though it's only been a few months, You've done loads for my emotional state, even if I might not show it. I'm going through so, a kind of an interesting part of my life, and it's just... What I'm trying to say is, it's good that you're here. I don't know if this is weird for you or whatever, but... Well, I've said it. I... I'm glad to hear it. Hey, let me show you something. What? is this? This, my dear Emma, is a little side project of mine. A friend of mine brought it to my attention and... Heh, <laughs> it's madness come to life. Huh? Does that say... El Dorado? That, it does. The city of gold? The myth? The legend? Ah, but that's the thing. I don't believe it's just a myth anymore. It's real, this place. And not just that. We... My associate and I, I mean... We've... Did you find it? I have a story for you, Emma. Sometime in the late 12th century... What is this? <laughs> An English ship called the Golden Birth got lost at sea after a storm. 
Among the casualties of the events were the ship's navigator and captain. And thus, the, sadly... Can I interpret the... Mm -hmm. um, I can give a narrator voice. Yeah, go for it. Huh. Thus, sadly, with no sense of direction of the leadership, chaos ensured on board. The man did not turn savagely, though. When I say chaos, I don't mean mutiny or brutality. Chaos is a lack of peace and order. And while the peace was maintained on the surface, at the core, things would soon crumble. It was not that everyone had an idea of how to solve the issue. Rather, it was that everyone had given up on trying to find one. Thus, all they could do is wait. They would get up, they would gather, they would eat. Possibly clean the ship if need be. And then, grind themselves to sleep at day's end. And the day after, wait for more. Wait until they rain out, out of food, or worse. For months, the ship drifted. That was meant to trip from England to Spain. Proved itself to, uh, to be one across the Atlantic. Well, Atlantic to us. To them, it was a great unknown. That felt like the opening to an Uncharted game. <laughs> Madness soon ensued. The man began to see things, hear whispers. Fever began to spread among them. Those who were unarmed were spared only because they jumped overboard. Among the sench, misery, and human waste. The ones who remained could only ring themselves to either scream or cry. Some began to eat wood believing it to be a fitting supplement for food. If I told you that months later, not all of them were dead. <coughs> you... <coughs> you... <coughs> Sorry, I'm drinking. You probably wouldn't believe me, right? But indeed, one man did survive. The ship was, was meant to transport weapons and armor as aid to the crusade. crusade. The surviving man, tired and awakened in mind, took a set as his own. He was afraid. Afraid of the things creaking in the night. Afraid of his crew members coming back to for him. If I told you that he was still alive when he reached land, Again, you probably wouldn't believe me. However, yet again, a miracle had occurred. He lived. The man has set foot in this new world. America! <laughs> <laughs> Days and confused, oh, he began to walk. Can you see? He made his way through the barren landscapes, hunting to survive. His lack. <laughs> Voice crack. His lack? His lack. <laughs> his lack of stability hurt his proficiency at it. Which, in the end, did not help. He could, <clears throat> he could not even remember his name after a while. Must have been all those Benadryls. Yeah. To not remember where he had come from. It was definitely all those Benadryls. <laughs> More Benadryls. <laughs> he could not even remember why he kept on walking. I mean, if you're out in the ocean, you're probably going to have some allergy issues. So, I mean, it does make sense he would take all those goddamn Benadryls. He became nobody. He became the Benadryl man. He eventually came across the, nat the natives. Despite his attire, I almost say it, naives. 
Upon <laughs> seeing how <laughs> weak and <laughs> upon seeing how weak and slow he was, they show him mercy. He came across the naives. <laughs> Dark Souls. He told, them, he told them of his lack of memory and purpose. They told him they knew of a place the only the only, where only the mad may enter. Who is that, Sir Galante? <laughs> place where he might find refuge. A city hidden in the mountains. A city made of gold. El Dorado. He thanked them. In return, he gave them some of the hymns he scavenged off the ship. One of those things was a paper ultimately used to write this story down. A paper now in my possession, which I fully translated yesterday. The man was never seen again. Alright, end of story. Yep. Don't ask why my voice changed, Emma. It was just... I just had a frog in my throat. The reason I just told you this story, Emma, is that written in it are directions the, the, the naives gave, had given the man on how to get to El Dorado. The writing also features a detailed explanation of the land and area. My associate has managed to find a place that matches the criteria perfectly. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't trust a legend, but... Given the fact that we seem, seem to have recovered the uniform the man wore, the uniform that had no business being where it was found, and several other artifacts the man would have given the natives from the ship. Sorry, I mean the naives. Don't tell me. You? We know where it is. We found El Dorado. I know how it sounds, but everything I've just said also matches with the pieces of evidence I wasn't asked to examine. Everything points to a single place. Say, Emma, how do you fancy a trip to the mountain sometime soon? Well, that's how she got dragged along, I guess. Oh man, we should have kept recording last time. We would have reached the be to be continued. Well... Whatever. Yeah, it's fine. Do you look distracted? Uh, eh? <laughs> Not that that's a problem or anything, just making an observation. Oh, um, sorry. I just said it wasn't a problem. Something on your mind? Well, a lot of things, obviously. Like how much of a piece of shit our defendant is? I expected something- well, yeah. <laughs> I, expe <laughs> I expected something to happen, but to actually know for sure someone else was there. It's a relief and a burden at the same time. We'll get to the bottom of this. I told you. I know you will. Hey now, I did say we. I imagine you intend to just jump back back into the investigation? Yes. That plan's worked for me pretty well so far. Understood. In that case, good luck. You're not joining me? I thought we were working on this thing together. It's become apparent that I can't emotionally distance myself from this. And that's not exactly a good thing when handling an investigation of any kind. I don't think I understand. Yes, you do. You got you you got me in a lie this morning, didn't you? It's funny. I've been criticizing Greenwell for hiding things. Yet I've been doing no better. Have I? A, a, all you've hidden is that you have a huge crush on Victoria. That's not really. I'm sure you have your reasons. So does he. That, and that's kind of a big problem. I still trust you. I know you do. And that's also a problem. I told you that now wasn't the time to be doubting yourself. I have to. Given that you clearly don't want to. Even if you are doing your best to try and act stern about it. Fair enough then. Let's just get it out in the open and go from there. Not here.
Could you um stop by my place a bit later? I just need to think about how to explain myself. Just don't go running for the border. Hey, it's not that bad. I know. It's a joke. And how do you know it? I wasn't the one joking? Because I'm not laughing. By that logic, you've, been made, you've made no jokes in the past nine years. Damn! Really? Just calling me not funny to my face. Wow. <laughs> Can't believe you're just casually burning me like this. People are going to hear, you know. So, um... Right. I was not gonna fight okay. video. <laughs> People Stop. roasting Phoenix for yeah. five minutes straight. Oh my god. <laughs> Or, or just make a clip of people using Phoenix's money to go out to dinner for five minutes straight. <laughs> I'll stop by later then. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Wow, we won the case, Mr. Wright. Let's go out for burgers. It's all on you. You've thanked me plenty, plenty enough so far. Just save them all until I get the job done from now on. This doesn't seem to be anywhere close to being over after all. I'm gonna start making saves now, because I, we, me and Ned have been having uh, technical difficulties while playing Conflict of Interest, so I'm just gonna be careful with every single case that I play on Pyrite from now on. All right. And it looks like I've got quite a bit on my plate today. The police are currently busy figuring out whose blood was on that knife. So when it comes to that, oh yeah, that happened too. The only thing I can do is just wait and see. Updated knife report. At the very least, I can't see a way it won't go in my favor. Famous last words, right? Well, thankfully, Payne's oversight has had an one other benefit. Or, well, I hope it'll be a benefit in the long run. The investigation is now being expanded to cover the entire forest. All the more chance to find evidence against this third person. So I should probably check in with Gumshoe as soon as I can. Next on the list is Greenwell. We've got some things to talk about, he and I. My patience has just about run out, and I'm pretty sure he's noticed too. So he better be up front for a change. Finally, there's Emma. She's obviously hiding things, but... As I said, I still trust her. Just less than I would like, I guess. I'll visit her later and clear all this up. In the end, this is still Emma we're talking about here. Whatever it is that she's kept from me, she's willing to share it now. That's all that matters. That's all that should matter. Okay, time to stop pretending to play piano and get to work. You're playing some pretty damn good piano there, though. Hello, Charlie, old pal. You're still not off the hook, just for the record. I didn't even click there. Hello, Zach. Long time no talk. Things are going fine. Trucy's scheduled for another TV special. She's even mentioned talks of a world tour. Not even an adult, and already she's made a name for herself. You'd be proud. After all, I know I am. Trucy's magical flying fork. I'd call it magic, but kind of getting a bit old. If nothing else, a conversation starter. All right, I think that's all that's here. I'll go ahead and make another save. Uh, I want to talk to piece of shit first. His first name is Peace, his middle name is Of, and his last name is Shit. Ah, Mr. Wright, fantastic timing. I was getting so bored of that interrogation that I was beginning to fall asleep. And now you get to fall asleep to being interrogated by me! Huh, I was planning to make that joke. I know. That's why I made it first. You know, for a guy that's pretty much won the case, you, uh... You're not looking too excited there. Unlike Mr. Payne, I don't like believing anything to be set in stone. Not even my innocence. 
You might be innocent of killing Miss Nova, true. But an innocent man? Of that, I'm still not convinced. What's that supposed to mean? It means that you probably shouldn't fall asleep. <sighs> Round three it is, then. You chose this, not me. True enough. Look at my badge. Look at that! Look at my badge! So, be honest. Is this badge cool or what? You know what? First time I saw it, I never would have agreed, but... You're pretty good at this whole lawyering business, aren't you? I know, crazy, right? I mean, I have my ups and downs. Yeah. Like my bombardment, but let's not yeah. talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you can tell me about this? Hmm. Nothing comes to mind. Nothing you didn't know about, at least. Was worth a shot, I guess. Let's talk about Emma. I, I thought she looked familiar. So you finally remembered Emma? Emma. Right. That was her name. She was Vic's friend. She mentioned meeting you on one of your expeditions. Heh. <laughs> yeah. Poor girl. Of all the times to tag along, it had to be then. Huh? Something significant about that expedition? You could say that, given it was my last one. I wonder. Will you tell me more about it now? Vic. Wow. You had a lot to say there, didn't you? I already told you everything I intend to regarding my past. At least I think so, but if you think of anything, feel free to ask, I guess. Just keep it related to the case, alright? Big Gumsu. Anything you can tell me about this? What about Adam? What about Eve? Wrong profile. That's not Eve. Adam and Eve. Yeah, I know. I. She has. She has blue hair. The other one has perp pink hair. Not purple hair. What the hell am I talking about? No, this is Eve. That no good lying. Gah! I still can't believe I just fell for his crap. So much for not using cheap, ch cheap tricks, eh, Winston? I'll just go ahead and present everything while I can. Just in case there's any new dialogue. This is like Cookie Clicker. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, that knife. A headache and a half, I swear. Didn't have to be one if you had just told us about it. Fucking asshole. So... So you left your home to meet up with the victim at the hut. You got there and saw she wasn't around. You entered the hut and didn't notice the pool of blood because you got ambushed by an un unknown assailant. Presumably the killer. You never got a good look at them. You stabbed them with your knife, dropped it, and then ran to your car. Unknown to you, Miss Nova, who had survived the attack, crawled in your trunk and ended up dying as you drove off. The killer, in the meantime, simply left the scene and left the knife with their blood behind it. I guess I'll have to chalk that one up to them just being in a panic themselves. You were eventually caught because you were speeding. Sound about right? Sums it up pretty nicely, I'd say. Well, not quite. There's still a few things that I'm not clear on with this. There's something that was established very early on in the investigation. Apparently, Miss Nova wouldn't have been able to fit into your trunk if it hadn't been completely empty. And according to the police, Everything that should have been in your trunk was taken out and left in your garage. This is one of the reasons for premeditation. I see what you're getting at. And it ended up being mighty convenient for Vic to be able to crawl in there. There's nothing wrong with convenience or accident, assuming that's the case. So, the stuff in your trunk. Were you the one who took it out? Of course not. Being the fastest pizza delivery man in town isn't a title you earn for driving slow. And given the amount of times I've been fined, let me tell you... The last thing I need is for the car to be breaking some other regulations. Suddenly him speeding right in front of Gumshoe makes a lot more sense, too. So, someone took it out without you knowing? Must have been the case. When I headed out to meet with Vic, I wasn't paying much attention. Chances are all that stuff was laid out on the floor and I didn't even notice. Except... Why? The killer couldn't have predicted Miss Nova making her way to the trunk. And the killer himself couldn't have put her there since he was in the hut with Greenwell. I suppose a reasonable explanation could be that the killer intended to use the trunk for something, but the plan went wrong when he got stabbed. But even so, just like I suggested during the trial, simply planting the corpse wouldn't have ensured Greenwell getting framed successfully. He might have been planning to kill Greenwell too, but... 
then that would have been just an extra body to deal with. Ugh, back to nonsense land. Let's try to take it one step at a time. You live alone, correct? Indeedo. That means this someone must have been an intruder. When's the earliest someone could have emptied it? Uh, let me think. Well, must have been that very day, actually. I seem to remember checking that stuff before heading out for my work shift. When I came back home, I went to the living room and watched TV. That's when it must have happened. I keep my keys in the garage, so getting into the car wouldn't have been hard. You fucking idiot. What about them being able to get into the garage? I doubt the police would have missed signs of a break-in. The lock to the back door between the yard and the garage broke recently. How convenient. Haven't gotten around to fixing it. No biggie, though. I still lock the door between the house and the garage. But you keep the keys to your car in that same garage? I... What? Any Anyway, there's still a chance the intruder left some evidence behind. You want to search the garage? Be my guest. Here's my address. Just uh, don't go rummaging through my stuff. Don't worry, I won't. I'm totally going to do that. The police probably already did that part of the job for me. You lied to me about your and Miss Nova's relationship. Well, I didn't see it having much to do with the case. And, I mean, lied is a bit of a strong word. You said you were just friends twice. Well, someone is keeping track of things other people have said I see. The ancient monks taught me the great art of listening. I've been exposed. So? What happened between you two? And don't say it doesn't matter to the case. It's literally the prosecution's motive against you. Things were good. Then, they weren't. We ended up realizing it wasn't working. That's all there is to it. There weren't any hard feelings. No anger. It just... ended. Because sometimes things fall apart. And because... Sometimes life's kind of a bitch, you know? I need to know, Mr. Greenwell. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Black? God! Black Psyche Locks? Holy shit. What are you hiding, man? Th these are... Thanks, but no thanks. I'm good. M Mr. Greenwell. Sometimes, Mr. Wright, sometimes life really just screws you over. You know? I don't want to talk about this. Change the subject. Mr. Greenwell. Change the goddamn subject. If it's so oh. freaking important to her death, then you'll find out yourself soon enough. But it isn't, so you won't. So just please, pretty please, if you truly care about the dead, change the subject. Oh my god, his face changed. Oh, his eye is twitching. I didn't realize. Now then, what were we talking about? Holy shit, man. Of all the things I thought I would see, that, I admit, was not one of them. Still, these black locks, they're different than the ones I've seen before. They're not a scar. They're not something he buried deep within himself. They don't even feel like some secret he's trying to desperately hide. No, it feels like the exact opposite. Not only is he aware of his burden, but he's choosing to be aware of it. He's choosing to let whatever's behind those locks haunt him. Almost like he's torturing himself. You're staring. Sorry. Oh my god. Can you tell me anything more about that last expedition? Ah, yes, more things to add to the questions irrelevant to the case, pile. I'll be the judge of that. <sighs> Basically, we were looking for this, uh, ancient and lost city. You've probably never heard of it. It's, like, super obscure, right? And I was pretty excited and thought I'd found it and... and roped Victoria and a rich investor into helping me out and... and... And I failed. The damn thing wasn't there. Not even a rock of it. It was just caves. Just... freaking... caves. I was made into a laughingstock and, well... here I am. Why would you be made into a laughingstock, though? Expeditions sometimes... sometimes turn up nothing. Sure, I guess you could say it's a bit unfortunate, but... Not like other archaeologists have an experience failure. Let's just say... This was special for several reasons. And all the reasons have to do with me being an ass. 
Just like Vic had always warned me beforehand, it really was the end for me. Not only were my, uh, claims somewhat out there, but I don't mean crazy, it's more like, you know, a detail or two was kind of strange, maybe, but also... A lot of bad things happened during the expedition itself. Like... I... well... I... got into a bit of a scuffle with someone. N nothing nothing serious. Seems legit, especially with all that hesitation. But honestly, that's not the worst of it. The worst of it is... That expedition is the one that put Vic in that asylum. After my... fight... Vic was pissed, to say the least. For numerous reasons. All of them pretty justified. The one that sent her over the edge, I guess. Well... Given the fact that the police were involved, the expedition couldn't get underway when it was supposed to. Chances were, it wasn't going to happen anymore anyway. But she didn't care. On the morning we had initially planned to begin our search, she took some of the equipment and just made her way down there herself. Some other members tried to stop her, but... Vic was Vic. <laughs> I say that, but honestly, even now I can't really see her doing it. But then again, I'd never seen her like that either. To, to be so angry to go down there, even with a hurt leg. The, the funniest part is, I didn't even find out about it until it was too late. And by the time I did, it was already too late. She'd gone missing. Got lost in the tunnels, they say, after the whole thing was over. We'd broken up by that point, but I still cared for her. I didn't know what to think. I couldn't sleep at night. I joined every search party they'd let me join. An expert, I said I was. When I got home after turning up short, I huddled up and cried. I imagined her dead body lying somewhere in a tunnel. I wondered if that day we'd accidentally passed by her, but that she was so weak she couldn't call out to us. That's fucking horrifying. Oh my god. And so time just passed. Every hour seemed like an eternity. They found her a week later. Starved and dehydrated. She couldn't speak properly. She was practically delirious. Doctors said it would pass. But it didn't. And so they locked her up. Slapped a brain damage on her forehead and left her to be forgotten. By the rest of the world. By the people she had called friends. Even by me. I don't think that's true. Emma doesn't seem to have forgotten about her. And I don't think you you just forgot about her either. For better or for worse, it's clear she wasn't just anyone to you. You can try and hide it, but... I know this hasn't been easy on you, Mr. Greenwell. You know, when she called me, it... Her very first words hit me back to all those years ago. I felt genuinely happy for the first time in a long while. I wanted to see her. I wanted... I wanted to say so many things to her and... And say... Say how sorry I was. It was my fault she ended up going into that tunnel. If I hadn't been a drunk idiot, I... Five years, Mr. Wright. She lost five years of her life because of me. My career was over, but hers wasn't. And now, five years later, she's dead. I've said it a bunch of times already, and I'll keep on saying it. She was a good person, Mr. Wright. I'll find whoever did this. Thank you. I'm sorry, Vic. I'm so goddamn sorry. I let him regain his composure. Phew. That was, uh... Well, that was sure something. Uh, so, what were we talking about again? Well, let's see. Nothing, I guess. But, uh, let's see if... I don't think any of these profiles will present anything new, at least. So... That's just gonna bring up the black psyche lock, so I think we're done here. So I'm gonna make a save, and let's just go somewhere else. Let's go to Green his garage. garage. Let's go to his garage.
we're going to walk into his garage and there's going to be 16 dead bodies on the floor. This seems to be the place. Hmm. Not what I expected from a pizza delivery man. Especially not one working for bucks for four bucks an hour. That's a pretty nice house, I can't lie. The police seem to have already finished searching through it. I wonder if I'll even be able to find anything of worth. Well, worth a shot at least. Now then. I go around the house and to get to the yard, and over there should be the, uh... Sure enough, back door's unlocked. Now this I did expect. Except I didn't, given how the, the house looks from the outside. Playing with my expectations, I see. Alright, let's see what we've got here. Now, what happened here? I see soot and some ash. Is something on fire here? Just looking at it, actually, it almost makes me think an explosion of some kind happened here. Looks pretty recent, too. Ah. Traces of soot and ash found in Greenwell's garage, suggesting there had been a fire of some kind. There's a a ladder over <laughs> here. A there's ladder. a there's a, a no, no, no a it's a ladder. It's a, it's a ladder, Matt. Wait, is that really all I can examine? No, what happened? Yeah, I know. I that looks to be all I can examine here, actually. There doesn't seem to be much on the desk. Except... Hello, Mr. Fingerprint. Lovely day we're having. Fingerprint and ash, eh? Could this be what I was looking for? I mean, I don't think even Greenwell would have missed this. And not like it would have been a hassle to just clean it up. So then maybe it doesn't belong to him, but rather our mysterious intruder? An intruder who happened to be in a hurry and failed to notice this? Heh. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Interesting. I'm hoping the forensics don't didn't miss this. I should probably look into the results when I get the chance. Oh. Yeah, I know. Okay. Nope, that's just the same. I think there is nothing more. Uh, that 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 appears to be it. I'm not seeing the exam button popping up anywhere. Yep, uh, that's it. I thought that there would be a thing that would allow me to scroll, like just to scroll around. Oh. Well, I know I said I wouldn't do any rummaging, but Greenwell's still being been pretty vague on a lot of the details, and he has fucking black psyche lock, so. I wonder if there's more I could learn about him. After all, whoever tampered with the trunk did it to frame him, which means it's someone he knows, or someone Miss Nova knew. Either way, it's pretty clear he doesn't want to be much help in giving names. So, guess I've gotta do what I gotta do. Being a fucking snoop, police left the doors unlocked. What a good decision. Boom. This must be his office. Much easier on the eyes than the garage, at least. Is it just me, though, or does it look kind of... empty? I'll say, man. There are quite a lot of books here. Almost all of them seem to be about archaeology. I'm shocked. Most of them also look like they're just as old as the treasures they describe. There are a few odd ones out, though. Though These two are romance novels, I think. This one seems to be about parenting. This one is about typical medical procedures. And this last one is a self-help book. Well, guess you can't blame a man for daring to have more than just one interest. This looks to be... A photo of Greenwell and Miss Nova. They both seem... happy. Well, I mean, yeah, but they look like they kind of have evil looks on their faces. Especially Miss mm -hmm. Nova here. 
they're plotting something sinister. And look at this smug she ass, like this has. smug mm. ass smile. She seems like he has, she has one eye. <laughs> they also seem to be at the crime scene. I'm guessing that place held some sort of significance to them. Voice crack. Something written mm. on the back too. The beginning of something good. It's been crossed out. Well, that's sad. I really can't examine that? Wow, okay. I'm guessing these are trophy cases. Each one has a label under it. The Millennium Chalice. The Stone of... Ozymand... 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 Dias. Oh my god. The Rogue Diamond. You mean the Rogue Turnabout? Thing is, though, they're all empty. Obviously, I can only speculate, but I guess there could be an explanation on how a pizza delivery man can afford this house. Well, isn't this some ancient technology? I imagine that says a lot coming from me. Here's <laughs> another cell phone from two, 2001. Phoenix, you old fossil. I'm not old! Boosted up pretty fast, at least. I guess he just doesn't use him that much. No password, either. I bet it has Windows XP. <laughs> We're gonna get the startup sound effect. I shouldn't. Then again, there could be something important on there. And I am doing this for Emma. Well, time to break some privacy. The most minor of the offenses I've done over the years. Let's see here. Huh. Hmm. That's interesting. On the day of the murder, he was looking to buy two plane tickets. To Ecuador? Not the typical tourist destination. Interesting timing there, too. I've also got a few guesses as to who the second ticket was for. I asked him more about it, but I did cross a boundary here. I'll just keep it to myself for now. Is, is that all? Will this just start the... I think I got everything I needed from there. Um, wait. There's something on the table there. It's Can I nothing. not? No, I can't examine it. What? Did I click out of the game? Oh, no clues there. Um, strange. There, there is something on the table. You can see that, right? It's probably a plate. I have such bad eyes. Okay, well... Yeah, it is just a plate. I'm just seeing things. I'm going crazy. Well, let's go to the city outskirts now. Uh... This is the bad gem I had given to Miss Nova. It was jamming the lid of the trunk, making Gumshoe investigate it in the first place. Greenwell's car, a.k.a. where the body was found. A.k.a. a pretty big part of her troubles. Oh, yep. Okay. Let's go to... the forest. Oh, there you are, pal. The logic defy you himself. It's admirable how you're still smiling at a time like this. Well, for once, what happened back there wasn't my fault. And any day without pay cuts is a happy day, you know? That, and I haven't been home in two days. And while that wouldn't be the case if someone didn't extend the trial, I'm at least happy that the case will definitely wrap up tomorrow. That a fact? Yep. Congrats, pal. The guy didn't do it. Well, I wouldn't be so sh Wait, hang on. What? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't surprised myself, but... Looks like you really got us this time. Hey, pal, don't look at me like that. I'm being serious. Uh, sorry, I just... I seem to be experiencing some cognitive dissonance. 
You? Admitting thy victory? Before the investigation's even over? Alright, be honest. Greenwell's just Edgeworth in disguise, right? I totally called it. Heh, <laughs> heh. I guess it's where nostalgia ends, eh? All the better, I'd say. So I take it your search of the force paid off? Sure, depending on who you ask. Let's say you're asking me. Then I'd say Christmas came early. Show me where the tree is. I had a sneak of suspicion, you'd ask. All right, this way, pal. D do we really need to climb all the way up there again? Well, no. But we're gonna do it anyway. We're actually going a bit further than last time. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Phoenix is gonna just collapse on the ground. And he won't be able to do the trial anymore. And then he's gonna have to call Edgeworth to do the defense. Ugh. You, uh, okay there, pal? Why are we here? <sighs> Gumshoe. Just to suffer? <laughs> <laughs> Why are we still Why here? Are we still here, just to suffer. Aw, oh, come on, pal. You can do it. We're almost there. Can I nap? Good, sure, I guess. When you get home, that is. Can I go home? Not until you examine the scene. Can you push me down this hill so I can roll down like a barrel? And I can go zoom, zoom like a barrel? Um. And then you just send me the summary of what you found in a letter? And can you write the letter in medieval handwriting? You, uh, really have no stam stamina, do you? Trucy once told me the same thing and made me a protein shake. It was gross, so I decided to just get old. Are we old yet, gumshoe? All right, pal, up you go. Huh? W wait, what are you... Wait, I've changed my mind, I'm good. Legs are super fine too. Really? <laughs> super good. I'm built like a rock. Gumshoe, you seem to not be responding. Gumshoe. Gumshoe, this is like super embarrassing, so if you could just put me down or something. Gumshoe. Gumshoe! Well, I'm glad at least Gumshoe's having fun. We are never to speak of this again. Oh, sure, no problem. Don't know if all those investigators we passed on the way will agree, though. Ugh. Shame the kid wasn't here to see that. Ho ho! Sweeter than a wind could ever be, I tell ya. Speaking of which, where is she? Just sorting some stuff out. Well, I guess you'll be the messenger of good news. You've built this up quite a bit. What exactly have you found? How's that analysis on the knife coming along? Well, slowly. Takes time to go through so many potential matches. At the very least, we've ruled out everyone involved in the case so far. Now, now's the hard part. Uh, it'd be a lot easier if we had a suspect we could compare it to. I'll make sure to tell you if I see anyone that fits the bill. I'm sure you'd make someone down at the lab very happy. Let nobody say that I don't give back. Now that you've expanded on your search to the, to the entire forest, what would you say is the general status of the investigation? Well, it's not easy, I'll tell you that much. There's a chance that there are some parts we'll never even explore. I can imagine. This place is massive. And to search all of it in a day. We've got Missile doing his best, but even he has his limits. Still, I'm hoping you found at least something. Well, that's why we're here. Yeah, but I'm not seeing a whole lot. Almost makes me think this entire ascent was just getting back at me for something. But nah, couldn't be. To be honest with you, pal, I feel a lot better today either way. None of that me meddling from yesterday. I don't recall us forcing you to help us. I'm not talking about you, pal. Oh? I'm gonna go out on the limb here and say the chief prosecutor didn't take too kindly to Payne's mistake. Yeah, not even blaming on, not even blaming it on me worked. Prosecutor Payne's still the one in charge, though. What joy. And let me tell you, he's not happy with how things are going. He'd have to be crazy if he was. Oh, yeah, I seem to remember an ordering not to give any information to you. He seemed to be doing a fine job of keeping the chain of command alive. Hey, chances are I would have listened. But then Mr. Edgeworth had another idea to that when I told him about it. And I couldn't help but hear him out. And here we are. 
You remember yesterday how I mentioned it took a bit to get the autopsy done? Well, there was a reason for that. Midway through doing it, the chief calls me in. Tells me federal agents want to take a look at the body. Federal agents? What do they have to do with anything? That's what I asked. Chief didn't know, but her hands were tied. Uh-oh. Why, uh-oh? What do you mean, why? I've seen enough movies to know that when the feds want to look at the body, it usually means a cover-up happens somewhere. Hey now, pal, relax. Me and the coroner were allowed to be present during the examination. The only thing they did to the body was take a sample of blood and DNA. And that's it? Yeah, weird if you ask me. I guess they wanted to be extra sure we weren't the ones missing messing with the evidence. And what a fine job you've done improving their concerns unfounded. Did they say what they were after? Nah, as I said, that part was apparently confidential. Still, weird. What would Miss Nova have, to, have had to do with the FBI? Good question. Not sure I have an answer. Her body was the only thing they seemed interested in. Huh. I remember asking Greenwell himself at some point yesterday. He said he didn't know I was talk what I was talking about. To be fair, it is him we're talking about here. And he's an asshole, but I can't imagine he'd have that sort of info. He said it himself. He hadn't seen Miss Nova in years. The plot thickens, I guess. Just don't have this in with you bringing the FBI director to the stand, please. I make no promises. This is how all of my cases go, Gumshoe. You know this. Oh, she's doing okay. She's strong. She'll get through this. Have you managed to dig up anything else on the victim? Victim? No, nothing comes to mind. Anything we should be aware of? For the moment, I don't think so. The only moment right, right now for you is caught, I'm starting to think. That's a realization nine years too late, friendo. Oh, piece of shit. Guilty or not, that guy rubs me the wrong way, pal. You and me both, unfortunately. Pretty sure we talked about me more than enough. Okay. What can you tell me about this, detective? Probably not any more than you already know, pal. Well, it was worth a shot. Oh, really? You have nothing to say about pain? Look at my badge. Look at my badge. Hey. <laughs> hey, kid. Eh. <laughs> Check it. Look at my badge. Showing that kind of stuff on the street is dangerous these days, you know. Okay, Gumshoe, it's not drugs. Come on. Especially with all these cops running around. Pfft, I ain't afraid of no cops. So, tell me. Any prosecution cases you interested in seeing me ruin? Yeah. Case of your arrest! Hands in the air! This is a sting! No! <laughs> <laughs> that exchange was beautiful. Still can't believe you got yourself wrapped up in an accident as well. Yeah, what a night, right? It doesn't seem like it has anything to do with the case, though. Still, the timing is a bit interesting, wouldn't you say? Hey, where do things have happened, pal? True enough, I suppose. What can you tell me about this? What can you tell me about this? Hey, what do you know about this? Hey, what do you know about this? Hey, Gumshoe, look at this. I notice you've left your shopping list on this brochure. <laughs> Buying stuff for Kay and Edgeworth, and also groceries for some reason. I did? Well, if I gave it away so easily, it means I must have already done it. Logic tier. Gumshoe. Any news on the blood analysis for that knife? Don't worry, we'll get it done, pal. But you know as well as I do that those things kind of take time. A man can always hope for a miracle, especially if it helps erase the, ease the tension. I searched around Greenwell's garage and found traces of... Well, of what seemed to be an explosion of some sort. Explosion? Oh, yeah, I remember the guys missing it, something like that. You think it's important? I'm not sure. Might be a good idea to ask, just ask Greenwell himself about it. Probably, yeah. So I paid a visit to Greenwell's garage. And I found this fingerprint. Would you mind checking in who it belongs to for me? Ah, uh, sure. But it'll obviously take a while for me to even get it to testing. For now, I can compare it to other people involved with the case if you want. If you would, ever so kindly. Mm, give me a moment here. He's literally just eyeballing it. That's how powerful Gumshoe is, Phoenix. He has... freaking 20-20 vision. 
40-40 vision. <laughs> Doesn't seem to match any of them. So basically, assuming law enforcement is innocent, it just means it wasn't Greenwell's or the victim's. Huh. More good news for me, it seems. Given that Greenwell lives alone and the fingerprint seems fairly recent, it surely has to belong to the person who took out the trunk contents. Well, let's take a little gander. Wow, only the path. Another set of tire tracks. Hey, congrats, you found it. <laughs> L listen, you've already tortured me enough by dragging me over here. Can you over here, you mean? I don't need you looking down on me any further. It's kind of hard not to. I mean, I am taller than you. Come shoe. Come shoe. <laughs> I'm going to pull out a gun. The tire tra uh, Oh wait, no, that's that's me. The tire tracks, if you would. I see you're not liking the taste of your own medicine there, pal. When have I ever been snarky or condescending to you, detective? Right, don't answer that. So, the marks. Right. Well, first off, we were able to determine these were left on the night of the murder. We know it because none of the rangers remember seeing them before then. This place has been closed off ever since the murder, so it couldn't have been after either. And what about the car that left them? They don't match Greenwell's car or any of the rangers for that matter. Meaning that these must belong to our extra person. Maybe, maybe not. But they're close to the scene. And whoever left them was in a bit of a hurry going down. Huh? We're thinking they drove to the place normally, and down the left path. They seem to have stopped at this line I've marked here. Afterwards, when the car started moving again, it sped right through the forest, no stopping. Seems pretty dangerous. It also seems like the accident of someone trying to get away. Someone who, say, got stabbed? That's what I think, at least. I mean, to be fair, it could also be a witness who got frightened by the crime. A witness would have been kind enough to at least call the police by now. From experience, not always. But either way, this is definitely suspicious. Either way, it's, un it's undeniable proof that someone, was el someone else was here that night. And coupled with the blood on that knife, things are looking pretty good for me. Even if I can't fully prove who this other person is, I have more than enough reasonable doubt at this point. And so, just as I said, you win! This is pretty great for me, admittedly, but that doesn't mean it's all over and done with. Just knowing Greenwell is innocent isn't good enough. I said I was going to find whoever did this, and I intend to keep that promise. Nice. Is that all? I believe Seems. that's all. Scenery is nice to look at, at least. Sure it is. Oh, yep. Okay. Well, fair enough. He already told me a lot about it anyways, so... Uh... Path to hut, or... Let's go to the hut. Jabba the hut. The murder weapon. Not. While it is covered in Greenwell's fingerprints, it seems it wasn't used to stab Miss Nova. Instead, the knife probably stabbed the true killer. A plant that secretes a toxin overnight, huh? Probably best to keep my distance. This place is pretty far out. Why did the murder happen here? The victim's blood. There's so much of it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So, let's go to the path to hut. Location unknown? Excuse you? Um, where, uh... Oh. oh, where am I? Crap. There's a bit of blood. I must have taken a wrong turn somewhere. Good job, Phoenix. You nailed it. No, you actually nailed it, Phoenix. You found, you found more evidence. Truly, you're an inspiration to us all. Oh no. Oh, there's a person. Oh, what a pain. What a Winston pain. It's bad enough <laughs> it takes forever to even get down and up. More, Even more time wasted today. Yeah, it's fine, I guess. I think I can sort of make out something familiar looking. 
yeah, I think I might actually be okay. Lawyer gets lost in woods, end quote. Lawyer gets lost in woods, end quote. Wouldn't that have been an ending, huh? Spark Brushel's gonna pop out from the trees. I've summoned him. Oh. Right, then. You don't want to hear there! <laughs> wait, 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 what was that? What in the world? My voice for Spark Brushel. What that are you doing here? That is way too high-pitched, man. What are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here, in quote? Wait. <laughs> wait a minute. Is this... Ketchup? But... But that's strange. Why would there be ketchup out here? There's not even a hot dog stand. How did blood? How did ketchup end up here of all places? Drop of ketchup. Okay. There's not a burger stand. Well, that's interesting. It looks relatively fresh too. I'll take a lick. A bit more than just, <laughs> a bit more than just a nosebleed. I'll also say. Ah, I'm no expert though. On one hand, I want to say this is probably just something unrelated, but somehow that doesn't feel right. It's too much of a coincidence to just let it slip by. I better keep it in mind for the future. Blood. Just how did it... Sorry, ketchup. How, just how did it end up here? And whose is it? Who spilt their ketchup off of their burger? It's probably me. Uh... Nothing. Yeah, no clues here. All right. Uh, I went to path to the hut. hut? The... Yeah, I went to the to the path to the hut, and we ended up here. Are we actually? At the yeah, we're actually at the path to the path, the path to the huth. Okay, this is looking familiar to me now, huh? And I think I get it. This is where that path I found leads to, roughly. I really do wonder if that drop of blood I found is related to the case. Sorry, it's ketchup, not blood. Well, I'll keep it in mind. Experience has taught me these things usually all end up fitting together. Somehow. For now, I'd say I have more pressing matters to attend to. Okay, so it's... Bath? Yeah, that's where we just were. Oh. Because it's... I mean... It is kind of hidden. But Phoenix just accidentally stumbled upon it because Phoenix gets lost. Let's go to the detention center and ask, uh... Piece of shit! Oh, let's ask piece of shit about this evidence. Hey, piece of shit. Sorry, pizza shit. So I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> While I, when I investigated your garage... I happened to come across an area that looked like as if it had been on fire. F fire? I take it you don't know anything about this then? Obviously not, huh? So when could this have happened? Well, again, when I went to meet with Vic, I paid every little attention, very little attention to the garage. So I guess it could have also happened while I was inside. But this looks like an explosion of some kind had occurred. The TV was on pretty loud. I really could have just missed it. You seem to have missed a lot of things right under your nose. Any idea what could have caused this? Actually, I do. A blowtorch I used got itself busted. It didn't look like anything serious, but I guess it could have blown up if someone knocked it over or something. That someone being the intruder, I guess. I imagine. Yeah, I know, I read that wrong. I imagine. Makes sense, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I, d I don't remember seeing a blowtorch while I was there, I guess. Then that must be it, I imagine. <laughs> the, the intruder must have gotten really luck lucky Greenwell didn't hear it, I imagine. I... <laughs> I'm just gonna... The fingerprint. Oh yeah, shit, I almost forgot about that. Thank you. Say, Mr. Greenwell, have you been working with Ash lately? I don't follow. Apollo. 
Well, when you were in your garage, did you ever get ash on your fingers? What on earth would I be doing working with ash? Do they accuse me of being a pyromaniac too now? Not as far as I know. This is good. Now there's no doubt that whoever left this fingerprint, it wasn't Greenwell. Hmm. Anything you tell me about this? Eh. Gonna go to my. We used to have. You almost sounded like that ghost from Luigi's Mansion too. That ghost. I was going for more Doodle Bob from SpongeBob. We got Doodle Bob in the detention center. Uh, let's go to the right anything agency. I'm assuming, oh, no, nothing, okay. Um, see outskirts? Okay, maybe we have to go to the garage? Okay, maybe we have to go to his office? Okay, no. Uh, detention center? Do we have a new talk option? No? Uh, this is a conundrum. Let's try going back into the forest, I guess? Yeah, I was thinking that. The hidden path? I want to go over there. I want to follow this path. We can tell it, to come, sure. Or does it just go to nowhere? Oh, yeah, that's a good point, actually. That would be the forest path. Hey, Gumshoe. Nope. Wait, wait. We have this now. There's something you should probably know about. A bit away from here, there is a little passage through the trees. On it, I found a small drop of ketchup. Might be nothing, but do you think you could check it out? Oh, oh, I love ketchup! Only minutes and you're already doing better than most of my guys. So I'll have someone take a look at it. I appreciate it. Let me know if you discover anything. If the trial isn't over by then, sure. Good, we did that. The second set of uh, road tracks? Uh, we tried Tire that. Tracks. We tried that and he didn't have anything to say. Oh, all right. Uh, I don't imagine there would be anything at the abandoned hut, but I'll try it just in case. Yeah. Uh, path to the hut. Pretty, I'm pretty sure we had to go to Emma Sky. Yeah, I was going to say that. We have to go visit Emma, but I'm not sure when we'll get the chance. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'm assuming she's gonna show up now. I see you've made yourself coffee. Sorry. I brought along a pack, a pack as a gift offering this time around, but it took a while to come by, so I ended up making some. There's quite a bit of it left. You want some? Nah, I'm good. How did you... Your office window. This is the second time you've left it open. This is called breaking and entering, ma'am. Not exactly a move of a dignified lady, is it now? Mr. Wright, I've just admitted to breaking and entering. I think it's pretty safe to say being dignified is a bit of a far cry for me. You know, I think I'll take some of that coffee after all. Sugar? Milk? Just milk. Mm-hmm. You seem like the type. What's that supposed to mean? Obviously, it means that I categorize people and I've just categorized you. And what's my category? A person that likes milk with their coffee, obviously. And what kind of people, in your mind, take milk with their coffee? The kind of people who look like you. Wow. You are really good at dodging the questions. Heh. <laughs> As I said, I'm not really dignified. That sort of includes answering the damn question. 
Here you go. Hmm, thanks. Why are we in the Shadow Realm? <laughs> smells pretty good. I guess I'll take a gander. Mm. I look like a stubborn lawyer. I don't like this. Yeah, th this feels suspicious. I feel like we're about to get drugged. I look like a stubborn lawyer who doesn't want to accept your client's deal. I'm sober enough to separate work from my own personal feelings toward a person. That said, you definitely look like the stubborn type. I'll give you that. Must be annoying. Especially given that your client's asked you to see me again. I imagine he's up the price or something. I did make it clear money would be a one-time offer. Then what can I help you with? My client wants to meet you face to face. Oh my. From a cloaked mastermind to this? So soon? You must be getting pretty panicky. Most people about to be cornered are, after all. My client has nothing to do with this. He asked me to send an innocent man to jail. He might not be a killer, but he's clearly involved. If that's how you want to look at it, I guess he is. Whatever deal he intends to make this time, you might as well tell. My client doesn't want Mr. Greenwell convicted anymore. Quite the contrary. He has information you might find useful. He also apologizes for an offer that was quite clearly not up to your standards. You should have known better. Now he does. If he doesn't want Greenwell convicted, just what is his game then? What does he hope to achieve with this? I told you yesterday. My client is trying to ensure justice is served. He believed incorrectly that Mr. Greenwell was the culprit. Today's defense convinced him of otherwise. I'm glad to have had such an impact. You really have nothing to lose by hearing him out, Mr. Wright. Sure, then. Oh, no. He Let's did go. It. Did you just... Yep. In one gulp, but it was still boiling hot. Let's just say I picked up a trick or two back in my day. Phoenix, why would you just down the entire coffee? What if it was poisoned or something? I don't know. Maybe there's a, a trick where if you drink all of it at once, it goes through your system quicker and doesn't kill you? I don't know. Well, this isn't awkward or anything. I'm a stranger who just asked you to meet a person you have a reason to dislike. I think it's reasonable, if nothing else. I guess I should at least make something clear. As I've said, I separate my work from my personal life. My clients give me tasks, and I manage them. I get it. Yesterday's offer gave a certain impression of me and my client. At the very least, if you don't believe my client, I want you to have some trust in me. I personally hope that this woman's killer is found. Well, regardless of your opinion, you're still acting on your client's behalf. If your client tells you to do something bad and you do it, frankly, your own view is on the issue becomes irrelevant. So actions are all that matter to you? That's not what I said. I just mean in your position specifically. At some point, your morality should overcome your sense of duty. I see. But what if following your morality can do just as much, if not more, damage than following along would? Am I guilty regardless of what I pick? Depends on the circumstances, I guess. Okay, then. Well, you're guilty of trespassing yeah, private property. You're guilty of breaking and entering <laughs> into my apartment not apartment, my office building twice now. Like, come on. Say a man takes your daughter hostage and orders you to kill someone. A man you've never met and know nothing about. If you don't, your daughter dies. If you follow your morality, a man lives but a girl dies. Follow orders and you save the person you love. But at the cost of a stranger's life. What do you do? This is like the trolley problem. But a more advanced version of the trolley po problem. I wasn't asking for an example. Well, you got one. Go on now. What would you do? I wouldn't kill him. So you would let your daughter die for a stranger? The kidnapper could probably go and get someone else to kill him later. And they could just as well ask me to keep killing Ad Infentium. My point is that I wouldn't kill anyone. I would do my best to try and find some way out of the situation. That means nothing if no such way exists. Your daughter still dies and your actions would have brought her to- No, it wouldn't- it would have clearly been the kidnapper's fault. And besides, for all I know, he would have killed her either way. Not to mention, my daughter would have never accepted someone dying for her sake. Well, I wasn't talking about your daughter specifically, but what we believe what we believe we might do isn't actually what we, what we might actually do. Your daughter might say she'd rather die than have someone else die, but when faced with fear, our survival instincts will take over. Just the same as your desire to save the ones you love will take over. 
In which case, isn't this whole discussion pointless? It doesn't matter what I think I might do. My point is that there are situations where our morality will be overshadowed by our human nature. That no matter how much we try, there is no right answer. How the hell did you just speak with not moving your mouth? That's, <laughs> what are you... Okay, oh, you're okay. It's just someone forgot to <laughs> animate their mouth. The her miming. Mouth. She's miming right now. <laughs> sometimes both choices are <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> That's how you're talking. <laughs> you gave an extreme example, though. And wait a minute here. We, we were talking about your situation. Are you threatened? No. Are you in danger? No. Then sorry, but I don't see how your actions are excused. There very much is a clear answer here, after all. Yeah, sure, sometimes we have to make tough choices. But you're clearly just following orders. Do you think I'm a bad person, then? I don't really think anything of you. I see. What were we even talking about? I'm sorry. Let's just enjoy the scenery. For future reference, don't use my daughter as, a, as an example for horrible hypothetical situations. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine, just... <laughs> I'm sorry for saying anything at all. I'm... Not quite sure why I even brought this up. Not thinking anything of you goes both ways. So no, I don't think you're a bad person. It's hard to call you a good one, though. I don't know you. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Shoulder view. <laughs> Just look at a phoenix's shoulder there. Why are we here? Is this really the time to be pondering the meaning of life? Nice, but you know what I meant. As I've said, you're going to meet my client. Is your client the CEO or something? Yes, actually. Wait, seriously? What does the CEO of a pharma group have to do with anything? Another question you shouldn't be asking me. Especially not when you have the chance to just ask him in person. Now then, shall we? As soon as we walk in, we get surrounded by a bunch of people. Good day. You already have breakfast with me tomorrow. I like you to meet you. I didn't even need it. Uh, hold on. I'll be right back. My uh, mom is calling me. Just give me a second. All right, I'm back. Let's continue. Excuse the noise. There's an important conference later today. Is it really okay to just ignore all of them? I assure you, I heard them quite well and will attend to them shortly. Take this elevator to the top floor. You're not coming with me? I believe we've just established I have other things to do. Besides, he wants to meet you privately. So if you'll excuse me. Okay, then. Just who am I supposed to be expecting at the top? And just how will they help me exactly? Hell, I, nev I never even heard of Reuben Pharmaceuticals. Then again, I've never heard of anything ever, so that's not a surprise. Blood twist, it was red, white. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> What's your name? Really should bring my ear back down on the ground again. Here we go, I guess. Uh oh. I'll interpret him. I'm, I'm gonna assume it's probably gonna be Adam up here, so... Nice office, I'll give, him, I'll give him that. Way less flashy than I expected of a CEO. By which I mean, why don't I have an office like this? Ah, uh, Mr. Wright. Wait a, oh wait, wait a, God. wait a fucking minute, wait a minute. Wait a, wait a, wait. Lex! Wait, wait. Didn't he die, like, five years ago? W wait. Oh? Wait. Wait, yeah. No, no. No, Lex is too tan. I was about to say, what if this was just an older Lex? But, wait. This doesn't make sense. You fucking died. Uh, did you say that? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Nice day, isn't it? I've seen better. True enough. True enough. 
I mean, every day you get with this view is good. Am I right, or am I right? I guess. Wouldn't know, never had an office like this. Mm-hmm. Bet you're rethinking that offer of mine already, eh? You know, that that money would give me a pretty nice office, I can't lie. I... Haha! <laughs> Just pulling your chain, my man. Nah, I'm learning my lesson. You're way too smart for a deal like that. I see that now. So you've replaced that scheme for something I would fall for? <laughs> oh, I like you already, see? I wasn't really joking. Take a seat, my man. Can I get you anything? Water? Mineral water? Lifetime supply of grape juice? I'm gonna take that third option. I... <sighs> oh, sorry, too slow. That that lad's so first gone. Nah, damn it. You gotta keep up, my man. Real good offers are the ones you could miss out on at any second. Like that one I made you, for instance. Oh, serious. <laughs> gotcha. Oh man, we're having fun already, aren't we? All's good, as I said. Really, that offer was tough for me to make. If I held any grudge, I would poison your drink or something. Huh. Interesting you say that, huh? Speaking of which, what did you say you would be drinking again? I'm good, thanks. Haha! <laughs> oh, my man, the look on your face. Cheer, cheer up! That right there was just a little in joke down at R&D. Right. I'm sorry, I don't think you've mentioned your name yet? Bah! Knew I'd forget something! Name's Lex Roomstorm, my man. As you probably figure out, I'm the CEO of Romy Robin Pharmaceuticals. And I'm here to, forget, to help you catch the killer. That's so. Look at my badge. Behold, my child. <laughs> okay. You're supposed to have a more enthusiastic reaction there, Lex. Yeah, you better. Hmm. Probably not a good idea to be sharing what I know. Especially since I still don't quite know what his game is. But let's talk about Eve, though. Okay. Alright. I know what you're thinking. I do! Why is this place called Roman Pharmaceuticals and not Rundstrom Pharmaceuticals? Am I right? Well, it's a bit odd, but not like I'll lose sleep over... I used to own a casino. You cut me off, okay. A nice little place, really. Holding quite a decent amount of people, too. Ever been to it, maybe? That one was under the Rumstern name. Eh, no, sorry. Really? Being a poker legend, I only assure you to have stopped by. I see you've done your homework. As I said, I messed up when coming to your the first time. I never make the same mistake twice. Anyway, the casino. As I said, it was all going well. Unfortunately, some brick went and burned it all down. I'm sorry to hear. Fortunately for me, the insurance company was good for the money. But at that point, I realized the casino business wasn't really for me. I wanted to find a way to help people. My dad was a doctor, wanted me to become one as well. And while I didn't follow that wish, I figured I could meet him halfway. And so, I started at a pharmaceutical company. But I couldn't call it Rumstrom. People see all sorts of movies and imagine casino owners as... as well, Scarface or something. Not the kind of Im Im image you want to carry over, is it? So, I use my mother's maiden name, Robin. Pretty good, eh? 
I, well, yeah, I guess. You don't sound that impressed. Am I supposed to be? Why even tell me this? Ah, I see. You don't, under you don't understand why I am telling you all this. Listen, I know you don't trust me. But I really do want to help. So I want to be as open as possible. You haven't had the chance to find out who I am. Oh, I know who you are already, Lex. So let me tell you about myself now. There's only one thing I'm really interested in. What's your relation to this case? Straight to the point, eh? Kind of my style. The victim. I used to know her. Great person, my man. Great person. What? Oh. When her mother died, I helped her father down out financially. And when he was gone, I was all she was left with. Poor girl was like a daughter to me. She had a bright future ahead of her. Until that damn expedition. When they look her up, I decided to pay for all her bills. I waited and waited for her to get better. And then, she just vanished. Then, but backed up, dead. When I heard they made an arrest, I had if look into the details. Situ situation looked pretty clear cut to me. Situation. <laughs> <laughs> the shit. <laughs> so I had her. So I had her get in touch with you. I was worried. Worried that a scum a scumbag killer would get away with it. I don't know if you can tell my man, but I don't like leaving things to chance. So you had nothing to do with the murder itself? Not in the slightest. I don't believe that for a second. Still, if things had gone my way, might I might as well have been an accessory, eh? There's still a chance things are going your way and you're lying right now. In retrospect, I guess I just held a grudge against Grimwell. If it hadn't been for that damn expedition, Mahes. Well, hindsight's 2020, my man. It's not like I'm, I can share the blame. After all, if I hadn't funded it back then... You were the one who funded the expedition? Victoria wanted me to, so I did. I could never really say no to her. I see. Can you tell me more about that expedition? At this rate, you should know the basics. We got there, something bad happened, police got involved, and Victoria wandered off into the caves herself. Then sacrificed her sanity in the process. When you say something bad happened, what exactly do you mean? Hmm? Oh, you don't know. Funny, I figured Greenwell would have told you. Then again, he always was a coward about it. Told me what? The day before the expedition, he stabbed me right in the chest. Who? Greenwell? Another reason I might have a grudge. I suppose. Sorry. You mean I imagine? I imagine? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it gives me many credit or not, but he was drunk. Blame me as the reason for him and Victoria breaking up. Were you? No. No, I was not. There's one thing I can promise you, it's, it's that. In any case, the room was full of people when he lunged at me. None of them were able to stop him. Once they cut him off of me, they thought I was dead. Chances are, I would've been. But Victoria show, showed up and put pressure on my chest until the ambulance arrived. She saved my life, Mr. Wright. Okay, well that kinda crosses him off the list. 
if if she saved his life, he wouldn't have any reason to kill her. She was angry at Greenwell. So angry that she did what she did. Just a scuffle, eh, Greenwell? I see. Of course, when the dust had settled and Victoria was found, I opened a lawsuit against, against Greenwell. Unfortunately, due to the prosecution's abysmal job, she was set free. Wait, was that how Payne had helped Greenwell out before? Can't say it matters in the end. He was already ruined by he was already ruined by that point. Happens, I guess, when you claim you found El Dorado. El Dorado? The city of gold? That's what Victoria and Greenwell claim to have found. As we later as we later, later established that was not the case. Okay, a lot of things are starting to make sense to me. Greenwell lied to me. Again. But that's not a surprise. I'm starting to think he might just be a pathological liar by nature. I'll have to talk to him about this next time we meet. Still, as I said, he ended up getting what he deserved. So, I can say I have any hard feelings. Especially since I recovered relatively quickly. Huh. Anything else I can help with? Okay, I'm listening. You said you're offering to help. I'm assuming you meant you have information that can help my case? Right on the money. Gotta say, your defense today left such an impression of me. I had no choice but to reconsider my assumptions. You're quite the, magi the magician of the courtroom, if I, say, if I do say so myself. And while I could very well be wrong to trust you, I can relate this possibility go unexplored. What do you mean? I had Eve look into some things for me and found something interesting. According to some one of my sources, a criminal by the name of Rasputin, ra ra Rasputin, <laughs> was a hideout in Ravenbrew Forest. What in the world, Rasputin? Wait. Word is, on the night of the murder, he needed someone help change changing his location. Said it got too dangerous. Said he <clears throat> said he'd gotten blood on his hands. Chances are that Victoria had come across something she wouldn't have that night. And he ended up slicing her. Slicing her, sorry. Slicing. <laughs> I mean that also kinda works. I think I found your man, Mr. Wright. Unfortunately, his block and DNA aren't in the police database. So you probably won't end up finding the a match on that block. But still, my sources are solid. If we'll probably will provide you with a file of on your findings on your way out. In there, you'll get the names of my sources. Call them in court and Victoria will assure you will assure for you. In Victory, sorry, not Victoria. Vic Victoria. She's gonna come back from the grave and help us win. I see. Thank you, Mr. Rumstrom. I appreciate that. Rasputin. It's probably Adam. Yeah, probably. Yes? Hi. Excuse me. The conference is about to start, Mr. Rumstrom. Ah, I figured it might be getting around that time. I'm afraid I have to excuse myself. We're announcing the acquis acquisition of a Virginian drug research facility. Huh. One of the best in the world at the moment. It shouldn't take too long. Would you mind waiting for me here? Sure, I guess. Good. If give him company, would you? Yes, Mr. Rumstrom. I'll talk here. Well? Well what? Isn't this the part where you search through my boss's office? Well, I prefer to wait until it's empty. Or at the least. Or at least when there isn't someone who will tell on me later. 
Mr. Wright, I can see it in your eyes. You don't believe a word of the Rasputin story, do you? I met Rasputin once. We played poker together. He was pretty good. He was also a 74-year-old man that had, that had left the life of crime. There's also the part where he died of cancer two months ago. I went to his funeral. Dignified. A lot of people showed up. Just as he feared. He wouldn't fall for this either. So you knew he was trying to trick me again? Evidently. And I'd have to be an idiot to not admit his requests are suspicious. So what do you intend to do? I'm compromising. I have a duty to fulfill to Mr. Rumstrom, but I also have to follow my morals. He never told me to not let you snoop around his office, so... Do what you must. You have my word, he'll never find out. This could also be another trap. I mean, you're turning on him fairly quickly here. As you said, you don't know me. Who knows? Maybe I have ulterior motives of my own? So trust me or not, it's your choice. Okay. Hi. Just do what you have to do. If, Miss, if Rumstrom's guilty, then get him. With you in play, it'll happen sooner or later. Might as well happen sooner if you ask me. As long as he doesn't find out about this, I'm fine either way. It's as simple as that. The only person to gain here is you. And the only person to lose is Rumstrom. I'm not condemning his actions, nor am I enabling them. In a choice between duty and morals, I'm choosing to do nothing. Whether that makes me a good or bad person, I can't say I care. Alright, fair enough. Let's snoop. Those are files regarding the company itself. I'm the one who compiled them and handed them over. And I can tell you, you'd be wasting your time going through them. Rumpsman's clean, through and through. Say what you want about the man, but he doesn't really need backroom deals. He's just a good businessman, period. As for his motivation for doing that business, well... He'll probably tell you it's for his dad or something, but... Well, who knows? People say one thing and... Anyways... You're not going to find anything here. That would be his office phone. Nothing special about it. All his calls there go through me. Although, maybe... Hang on, since he didn't have to go too far... She's searching through his desk. Well then, what do you know? He left his phone behind. There you go, take a look. Hmm. Let's see. Another 2001 phone! Oh my god. There's a tracking app of some sort opened up here. The location is pointing at is where Greenwell was pulled over. Interesting. What was he tracking, though? I don't recall there being a whole lot there. Huh. You know? Maybe Emma was lying about more than just a crush. Maybe this badge here has a little tracking device in it, and that's what she's hiding. Because the badge is right next to the car. And that's where the tracker is right now. The view. The what? The view? The view. The yeah. Quite a view, is it not? For the record, out of those out of all those skyscrapers, Rumstrom owns at least three. That's so. Trust me, whatever he told you about himself. The one thing he constantly understates is just how rich he is. And why is that? If you met a guy who was really rich and powerful, and his name was Lex, what's the first thing to pop into your head? Um, the Superman villain? Lex Luthor? Exactly. And trust me, Lex Rumstrom does not like that comparison. <laughs> it reminds me of Vex yeah. Vulper. <laughs> Vex Vulper, oh my god. Not. One. Bit. That's about all the time you're going to get. Thank you. There's still time for it to turn out this was all a ploy to set you up. Is it a ploy? No. But then again, that's exactly what someone running a ploy would say, so... Okay. That was something. So, how are we all, go how are we all doing here? And everything is in order, sir. How did the conf conference go? Well, there wasn't a whole lot of... That could have gone wrong, you know. Always worth to make sure. Indeed, indeed. So, Mr. Wright, where were we? I don't think I'm going to get any more information here. And what information I do get, I'm not sure I can trust. I think I have to be going now. There's still plenty of leads to look into. I'm sure. Especially with what I just gave you. 
if make sure to give Mandy. I already gave him the documents on Rasputin. Good, good. Well, my man, looks like you're all set. Good luck out there. Thank you, Mr. Rumstrom. Miss Eve. Mr. Wright. Until next time, I suppose. I have a feeling it might be sooner than we both expect. I'm sure. Yeah, she is definitely going to be on the stand. Well then. That certainly turned out to be a ride. But it's not over yet. There's still a lot of work to be done. I'm on the right path, though. You're not nearly as clever as you think, Mr. Rumstrom. We'll be meeting again soon as well. Cool. It might also be a good a good time to pay a visit to Emma. I feel like she might have the last pieces of this puzzle I need. Okay, let's go. I've been ringing the doorbell for a while now. Oh no, is she dead too? Is she not home? Emma, you there? Emma? The door. It's unlocked. Oh shit, I'm... Uh... This is no good. Uh, Emma? This is... This is no bueno! Uh, no signs of anything bad happening. By the looks of it, she seems to have left in a hurry. But why? What the fuck? She has a, a really, really long bed. Yeah. It's a bed. Holy shit. It's the no size... No shit, Joe! <laughs> <laughs> it's the size of at least eight pearls. <laughs> a pretty tidy one. Well, let's see what's under it. Huh, I expected like a ninja to pop out, to be honest. Still, what's under there is intriguing, if nothing else. There's a sleeping bag that looks like it was recently used. There are also some clothes and books. Lots and lots of books. This one has a bookmark sticking out of it. Let's see, is that a fucking Necronomicon? Looks like a book on toxins? Interesting. The bookmark seems to be pointing to... A man-made toxin called S-I-N. Wow, what a great name for a toxin. Cool. Emma keeps her desk pretty clean. I would feel bad just going through it. So I'll just stick to what's on it. A few case notes, some mail, fingerprint powder. Nothing really seems out of place. Except maybe this. A locket. I don't think I've ever seen Emma have it on. I want to say it's a new thing, but looks fairly old. There's nothing in it either. Huh. Hmm. Doesn't look like something something she'd own though. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. I think that's it for this room, I guess. Well? Really? There's nothing else here? Weird. It seems... Let's go Let's visit... Let's go to the wah! <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, not the wah this time. We're gonna go see a piece of shit. All right. Um, I'm gonna see. Don't go stole! That might be Greenwell? You've said more than enough! I have nothing more to say to you! Mr. Greenwell? Eh, sure. Ah, oh, it's you. Uh, <laughs> hi. Don't ask why my voice was so high pitched just there. Don't worry about it, I had a frog in my throat. Something the matter? Hmm? Uh, uh, oh, no. I just thought you were someone else. So, uh, what's up? Right, well, there's something we need- we have to talk about. 
Isn't there always? So, I had a conversation with a Mr. Lex Rumstrom. Never heard of him. No? That's interesting. Because he remembers you pretty well. In fact, he remembers you fucking stabbing him. He had it coming, you know. Definitely not the words I want to hear right now. Look, what do you want me to say? Yeah, I was drunk. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, it was a mistake. But he still had it coming for what he did to Vic. What do you mean? Oh, Mr. Money forgot to mention that little detail. A few months before the expedition, Vic filed a police report against him. You know, with friends like these, who even needs enemies? Why did she... The guy's a creep. Creep! They made a peace later, but God knows why. And she thought I wouldn't find out. Well, then again, who could blame her? The bastard went and buried the reports in no so, so deep nobody could find it. The only reason I did was because a cop friend of mine mentioned it to me. Right, but should have just forwarded the report to the media. Let that prick get a taste of his own medicine. But what did he do? Cameras. Pardon? The bastard had put cameras all over her house. He was watching her. That's... Yeah, pretty bad. Want to know something else? He made himself a duplicate key of her place, too. Wow. With, without telling her. W wow, man. Wow, Lex. Now I hate you. Yeah. I... God damn it, Lex. How she even let him be a part of her life after that is beyond me. Well, that's not true. I know why she did it. She was hurt and lonely and didn't want to lose anyone else. Because the pain was still there and I know it was still there. But still. But still! She should have gotten a restraining order. Yeah, this is pretty bad. So yeah, stabbing him wasn't the best thing to do, sure. But he had it coming. So, understand my thought process a bit better now? I understand so it, sure. So, if Lex is really the... the villain of this, who the hell is Adam? That's what my question is. I don't know how he relates to all this. I still Maybe don't... Maybe we will know him during this day? Uh, uh, I don't know. We might run, in, run into him at the very end. I still don't approve. That said, Rundstrom is looking more and more like the man I'm after. Uh, what do you know about this locket? <gasps> oh, oh, that was a shot in the dark. Where'd you get that locket? Huh? Oh, I just came across it. Why? You found it at the crime scene, I take it? Well, makes sense, I guess. Sorry, why do you ask? Ah, well, that's Vic's locket. You can see the little engraving on the side. He's right. I didn't even notice. From Lucas to Vic. Every loss is another chance to start over. I was surprised she kept it for all those years, but... She always carried it. Even after they locked her away, she still... Then why does Emma have it? That's not a great look. Uh, Mr. Wright? I see. I think I'm beginning to get it now. What Emma was keeping from me. I just need to think back for a moment. I need to think about what exactly triggered the psyche locks back then. And when I put that together with this locket, the answer should become clear enough. Back then, what Emma was hiding from me was... Uh, I don't think she's the killer, but she was at the crime scene for sure, I think. Nobody was living with her? I mean, there was that... a, a sleeping bag. Oh yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. There was a sleeping bag there as well. Back then, what Emma hid from me was related to Nova's escape. Under normal circumstances, there would have been no reason to hide that. However, she did, which means she was involved in that somehow. Nova was on the run for six months. During those six months, her actions and whereabouts were unknown. Until now. That's it, isn't it? Emma, you let her stay with you after her escape. That's where she'd been during those six months. That's why this locket was at your place. You okay there, Mr. Wright? Yeah, no, I'm fine. Just fine. Am 
My conclusion could be wrong, of course, but I know Emma's no killer. And she would have told me if she was at least at the scene. I don't like it that she hid it from me, but I understand if nothing else. Uh, yeah, let's talk about this. You think you can tell me about this? Nope. Okay. Nope. What about this? Nah. What about his phone? What about the blood? The I'm sorry, I mean the ketchup. Uh, and I could just present the locket again. Vic. Vic. Okay, no, that's oh. it. Uh, talking point? No. Let's go back to Emma's apartment. Maybe she's back. No. Let's go to the city outskirts. Oh. Something new here. Um. IG! No, no. It was the right thing to do. There's somebody over there. He's talking on his phone. The main reason we born means to be to you, but. But don't he done? Got that mean then and he knew him the better went. Huh? <laughs> Whom's the fuck? Mr. Beanie's right. Oh, it's probably Adam. Yeah. It's Adam. Oh. Why are you here? What do you mean? This is a crime scene. One my case revolves around. I can't imagine there's anything more for you to learn here. I can understand wanting to be it throughout, but running like a headless chicken? Doesn't sound like the best strategy to me. Okay, so what are you doing here, Adam? I seem to remember telling you to not remember that name. Hey, you make it a little more complicated for me, I make it a little more complicated for you. Weird, I don't remember making things hard for anyone. If anything, I've been out for the de for the way as much as I could be. That's kind of where the complication comes from, given that you're clearly not just anybody. And what makes and what makes you think that? We're both standing on a crime scene. I don't think normal citizens get to do that, which makes you a part of law enforcement. How wary of observant of of you? Would you like some chicken nuggets I've still got in my car, sir? Reward. <laughs> no, I want a gold star. No. I just want to know who you are. And why is that? For all you know, I'm just a random edgy forensic. Well, until you tell me as much, I have no reason to just dismiss you. Okay, I'm a random edgy forensic. <laughs> okay. Alright. I will not pre I will now proceed to make random edgy forensic noises. <laughs> Um. Noise demonstration complete. Yes, you're hilarious. Now, seriously, who are you? I told you not to worry about that. Just focus on, just focus on the case. I am, and right now you're in my field of vision. Then allow me to move. Can anyone talk like a human being, please? Or you could just throw me a bone here. Hmm, interesting. I was assuming you two were exchanging information. I guess I was wrong. Hmm? Alright, I'd rather not have you know too much. But I'll tell you enough to keep you on the right track. That anonymous phone call about the dead body. You remember, right? The one that got that detective to drive there? It was in a prank call person had died that night. Some old man who had a heart attack was he walked alongside the road. A driver happened to notice him and called the cops. Because of the speed they were going with, they couldn't stop immediately. And by the time they did and came back, the old man had crawled away in his last moments and fallen down a hill. And since the detective looked forever to arrive, the caller eventually packed pack up and left, assuming they just imagined it. And the police, in turn, assumed it to be a prank. An endless string of assumptions. 
We found the old man's body this morning. Are you police, though? By the way, the caller was a 60-year-old woman on her way of her from her daughter's house. So what you're saying is... That that call had nothing to do with the crime. Not a big deal to you, of course. After all, you, your theory doesn't even need it anymore, does it? Hmm. Here, the official report, if you don't believe me. Let's see. All of this looks official. It's even signed by Payne himself. But what was this man doing late at night walking around here? He didn't own a car. You've already looked into it? Oh, sorry. In a manner of speaking, the reason he had a car attack was, was because he ran. And given that he lived in the city, well, I can only commend him for making it as far as he had. Doesn't sound like a recreational jog. Then, it probably wasn't. He was running, trying to get somewhere, obviously. Anyway, keep up the good work. Next time, don't remember my name, K? Kay? Kay Faraday? Um, uh, what? <laughs> I was a good boy, just for you. Okay. Hey, wait a moment. This file says that the old man still hasn't been identified. So how did he... Wait just a moment... And... Oh, he ran away. Gone. And just when I thought things were starting to get, be a bit more clear. Not related, huh? Well, it's in my evidence now. So how about that? An old man. So oh, that ketchup was... Bro, um, the ketchup we found in the <laughs> hidden path was probably from the old man's. It might be. Now the question is, are we going to know this old man? It was Winston Payne! Hmm. <laughs> 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 Gumshoe? Hey. Hey, pal. Hey, pal. What you know, I want to voice Gumshoe. You want to do his voice? When we get a new dialogue. Yeah. Uh. Do you know about Lex? I think I mentioned earlier that I would suggest whose blood should be compared with the one found on the knife. And I think I found a possible candidate. His name is Lex Runstrom. Runstrom? Huh? Something wrong? Nah, pal. It just, it, it just feels I heard the name somewhere before. He is the CEO of Rubin Pharmaceuticals. Hmm. What's what that where I heard it? Well, not that it matters. I can check it out, sure, but... What does he have to do with the case? He was an old friend of the victim's, and he's been getting way too interested in the case. As in, trying to, der to derail the investigation. Sounds suspicious enough. I'll call the boys down in the lab and check it out. I appreciate it, Detective. Don't thank him yet, pal. Yo and I both know it's not over till it's over. True enough. But aren't you the one who was saying I had this in the bag earlier? Uh, what do you know about Eve? Nope. Adam. If he's on the police, then... No. Not important. This book? No. What about this tracker? Uh, lock it? Nope. Okay, I think that's it for Gumshoe.
Waluigi time. Oh, it's Gumshoe? Oh, pal, you there? I'm here, Gumshoe. What's up? Well, I just got in touch with our favorite science kid. Emma, is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. Figured you might be worried. She says that she's sorry she wasn't home. She also says she'll be out of cell phone range for the rest of today. But that she'll be back tomorrow. Out of range? Where is she going? Didn't say. Huh. She's going to find El Dorado, I guess. Well, at least she's okay. There's another reason I'm calling. Do tell. You remember how you told me to check out that rums from Sky's blood? Well... Guess your days just keep getting better, pal. Because it was a perfect match. Ooh. Ooh, wait, though. That could be blood from when he got stabbed five years ago. Um. This is probably Victoria. Can you hear me? You, in the endless void? Does my voice reach you? You must be confused. That's okay. I'm merely here to tell you the end. The end of that little legend, I mean. The knight, our own little nobody. Oh, wait, no, you can do the narrator voice. I mean, this is I... talking about Eldorado. <laughs> the knight, our own little but nobody, had made it through the treacherous journey in search of the fabled city. It was his hope to find his own. He followed the path marked for him by the tribe. He eventually made it to the entrance of the cave. The road forward was stuck. That did not deter him. Why would it have? As far as he was concerned, he had reached world's end. Regardless of whether or, or not there was an El Dorado to be found, he decided his would be his tomb. And thus, he stepped forward into the darkness. Who can really say how long he'd walked? Hours? Days? Dare I say months? After all, a madman can lose track of time quite easily. And he figured, if there was, perhaps, a deity waiting for him in the city, Surely, they would appreciate his sacrifice of flesh? Surely, they could taste his determination? Surely, it would all mean something? He pressed onward. He walked through the seemingly endless maze of caves. Until... Until he came across it. A passage, a long hall stretching into darkness. The darkness called to him, and he obliged. Oblige. At the end of his journey stood the door. Hmm. He approached it, and the door spoke. Can you hear me? You, in the endless void? You've come before me, as many have in the past. I am El Dorado, your promised destination. Now tell me, oh mad nobody, tell me what you seek. And, and the knife, understanding that there was no city of gold, under, understanding the truth, opened his arms and whispered his wish to the door. And a contract was made. Well, Victoria, do you remember your wish? Hmm? 
Can you really not hear me call out to you? The end is near. Uh huh? Oh, this is probably Emma. Big? Oh, maybe this is this is mm. Lex. Hey, okay. Earth to pick. Maybe. Oh no! Oh, it's, no. it's Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Earth to Vic. You okay there? I'm I'm fine. I just spaced out for a second, I guess. Oh, my head is killing me. You want me to get you some water? No, no, really, I'm good. Did you get all your stuff? Yeah. Not like there was a whole lot of it. Listen, Vic. I'm sorry, Lucas, but I've made up my mind about this. This can't work anymore. Every time I look at you, all I can think about is... Is... I know. That's not what I was going to say. I just... Want you to know it wasn't your fault. That's sweet and all, but... There's nobody else's it could have been but mine. Why can't it just be nobody's fault? That's nothing more than consolation. The fact is, whether it was my intention or not, it was my body that's to blame. It's as simple as that. It is simple, but not like that. You shouldn't have to blame yourself for every bad thing that ever... Stop. I know what you're doing. I'm not doing anything, though. You are. You're sort of trying to lessen just how bad the situation is. You twist reality and just flat out omit what doesn't fit your narrative. You always do it. I'm not saying I'm blaming my myself for everything bad that's ever happened. Just for this. And this is my fault. So please, don't lie. I can't say I don't do that, but... The one lying to you right now is you, Vic. I'm able to look at the situation objectively, you're not. I want to say there's nothing objective going on here, but it's pretty clear you don't want to listen. I'm sorry I hurt you. You haven't. I'm sorry I'm hurting you right now. You aren't. I mean, I don't want us to break up, but... But I get it, Vic. I do, and... I know that you'll realize you're making a mistake soon, and... You're lying to yourself again. You're a good man. But we've run our course. We'll keep on hurting each other if it keeps going on like this. Vic. Please, just... Please. I don't want to have to hurt you like this anymore. I don't want to think back to that hospital every time we talk. You're an idiot if you think it won't hurt either way. I love you. I... L I love you too. But I can't. I just... can't. It'll always hurt. That, I promise you. And it'll have nothing to do with you. If it's your fault, then it's mine too. And I'll never let it go. Never. Because you're wrong. Lucas. Here. I want you to have this. It's... something to remember me by, if nothing else. Lucas. From Lucas to Vic, every loss is another chance to start over. I'll always wait for you, Vic. I'll, um... I'll send you over some stuff regarding the expedition later tonight. That okay? Yeah, that's okay. We're really gonna do this, you know. I'm starting to get calls from my peers interested in our research. Well, uh, just one old guy, that is, but... <sighs> oh. Seriously, seriously. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. It was a it was a flash of... I think it was the hut, or maybe it was just the forest. I can't remember. If you need anything, I'm here for you. I know. Thank you. How long have I been stuck here? How many days has it been since... Ugh. My body feels wrong. Everything feels wrong. It feels like I'm floating in the air. Like the floor will drop beneath me and I'll fall at any moment. They keep calling me from work. I keep not answering. I feel sick. My chest hurts. Almost as if someone stabbed me. Uh, okay. I don't want to feel this way. Please, someone. Anyone. Oh, hi. So, they didn't have the bread that you wanted, but I hope this is fine. It is. Thank you for getting these for me. No problem. It's the least I could do. You shouldn't have to be getting my groceries. And I don't have to. If I couldn't, I just wouldn't. Wouldn't you? Or are you just a good person? You're my friend and I want you to be happy. For you to be happy, you need help. I want to help you to make you happy. 
because your happiness is my happiness. Well, got me there, kid. <sighs> oh. oh my... Whoa, whoa. What is up with this headache? Do you, um... Do you want... Do you want to talk about it? Depends. Do you want to talk about your last exam attempt? Not in particular, no. There's your answer then. Well, fair enough. I assure that be your answer anyway. So... I've decided we should have some fun tonight. I do not like the sound of that. Relax, it'll be great. I brought up one of those science fair volcanoes to try out. What? Am I suddenly 12? Again, an expected response. <laughs> but... This is the new and improved sky version. This must be some sort of weird dream. People in dreams are never aware they're dreaming, you know? How do you improve a volcano exactly? Ha! Ah, I see, I've keep, I picked your interest, m'lady. Sure. Let's give it a shot. Not like I've got anything better to do. Alright! Are you sure this is a good idea? <laughs> the house will explode. Oh. <laughs> Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Trust no, me. No, you don't. Trust me, there's no way this could go wrong. Boom! <laughs> 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 no, I just put this here and there. Boom! This here and... <laughs> I knew it, yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wait. That explosion that happened in Greenwell's garage. Emma. Emma, my darling. Um. Emma, my sweet. Um. My floor is literally lava right now. Success? It's still flowing. Um, I'm sure it'll stop. It's scientifically impossible for it to keep on flowing down forever. It's still going. Uh... Guess we're breaking new scientific ground. <laughs> well, Emma, since you were so kind to show me a bit of your field, let me show you a little bit of an anthropology. For example, did you know that in some societies, people who engage in spraying someone's house in lava partake in an ancient ritual? That, um... That's so? That's so indeed. What, uh, what kind of ritual? Sacrifice! I'm going to kill you! I'm very happy you asked, my dear Emma. It's the get murdered horribly rich- No, I was joking! I was joking! I was joking! What the- Wait! <laughs> I'll- I'll put it up! This isn't funny, my floor is lava, damn it! The f it's- I mean, when you say it like that, it's- I mean, it's not actual lava. I know it's not actual- Who do you take me for? Someone who would agree to a volcano experiment at like 10 p.m.? You suggested it! Hey, I'm a young college student who just wants to have fun. You're the old professor who's supposed to teach me life in some fun and games. Old? That's it, Emma. You've crossed a line. Get your ass over here. Wait! What's... What's... <laughs> no, what's so damn funny? Be careful, the... The floor is lava! Oh my oh, god. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the challenge? Yes. Floor is lava! You can only walk in furniture! You brat! Fine, you watch out, I'm coming for you. You will know my wrath. Bring it on, you don't have what it takes. Charge! That was... that was fun. I... even for a moment, things felt... Thank you, Emma. Heh. <laughs> what are you doing? Just tell her that. Thank you. Oh! <laughs> now, nah, no need to thank me. Just happy to... to eat well. Of help. 
it feels like her mind is just slipping and she keeps skipping forward in time. Lex? What are you doing here? Huh? What do you mean? I've been here for the past hour or so. Where's Emma? Eh? Uh, who? As far as I can tell, you and me are the only ones here. What? What date is it? Oh, uh... April 3rd? April? What the hell? No, it's... it's March! Or, wait, no. Is it February? The title card said four months before the expedition, so... Wait, wait, wait a minute, what the fuck? Wait. The title card? Breaking the fourth wall here? Wait, what card? What am I saying? Ah! My head! What is... Hang on. Lucas was here a little while ago too, wasn't he? But that's impossible. These visits... They must have taken place days apart. Scratch that, months! So why does it feel like minutes? What's going on? Victoria, are you okay? No. Gah! I'm not okay. Wait, I'm remembering something. I remember finding something. But how? I... No, this is a memory I shouldn't have. This isn't supposed to happen yet, is it? Wait, no, what am I saying? I... I... Victoria! You've planted cameras all over my house. What? What are you talking about? I will never... You duplicated my house key too. That's ridiculous. No, it's not. I've, I've, I'd found them before. April 3rd, right? Yeah. Tonight is where I'll find them. After you leave. You'll slip up and reveal you know about me and Lucas. Something you couldn't have possibly known. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it happened. Victoria, you're scaring me. What the fuck is going on? I'm scared too. Because... Because I remember. I'm... I'm dead. I've been murdered. Everything I'm seeing right now... They're just memories, aren't they? And none of this... None of this is real! What? Yeah, I'm... I'm... Confused as you are. What the fuck? That's what? Confused. What the fuck? Just happened. She probably had some uh, visions from her future. Yeah, I mean, it's not the most outlandish thing that could happen. But, wow. All right. Well. So maybe my theory was right. The city is having had some psychological powers? Yeah. Thing? Maybe. I mean... Uh, it, it could be from the time when she ventured off into the cave on her own after Lex got stabbed. She actually did find it. She found the door. She wandered through the caves, found the door, and... I don't know what she would have wished for, though. But... We're gonna get to this trial next time, I guess. So, yeah. I'll see you guys next time.